Hey, we did our Touch of Disney yesterday, and uh, boy, it was nice to be back in the park. Hey there, this is Tom with Tom's Tech Show. And yes, I do other videos other than technology, basically what I like. And uh, if you like all that stuff, then just you know, like, share, subscribe all my videos, and, and we'll be good. Okay, so we did our Touch of Disney yesterday, and yes, it was nice to be back in the park, kind of wandering the whole area and everything else. Um, you, know, you get your tickets and, and all that and get there and uh, the first thing you have to deal with is of course parking and um, parking opens at 1130 so if you're gonna try and be there early then you're gonna be in the mix of people who are just circling the area so one thing you have to know is that when you come in if you come off the freeway you're gonna be coming down this Disneyland Drive here and as you come down here you you know you're going to go into the into the parking structure here but if the parking structure is closed and you come down all the way down here to magic way make sure to turn right onto magic way because if you continue on down here in this direction towards disneyland you're going to be backed up and stopped by the people who are just there to go to downtown disney so that's going to stop and if it's like uh, they opened the gates at right about 11, 15, 16, 11, 17 for you to get into and line up in the parking structure. Um, but if you're this way and it's 11, 10, you're not getting out of there anytime soon. So definitely don't go all the way down Disneyland Drive. If you're making the circle, if you're doing the loop, uh, then cut over Magic Way, back up Walnut, over to Ball, and then come back around. The flyaway may not be open first. They did kind of open the... Um, actual drive there right into the entrance because there's a little overpass that makes you skip this intersection here but that may not be open they didn't have the cones quite open for that right yet so you had to go definitely take the Disneyland Drive area to get over here and to go into the parking structure so from there in the parking structure you kind of do things backwards right so you walk down and they route you into where the trams, where you would normally get on the trams and go backwards. You go through the dog sniffing at you, temperature screening, you know, security dog checking, and then uh, through backwards through the bag check area. And then they walk you back out onto the road where the trams usually go up to the park and let you get in. And then once you get to there, then you're just jumped out into the big center area between the parks and you head over to the gate to get into the park so once you're at the gate then you have your tickets uh, for some reason the barcode on the top on these tickets was not working so we had to use the barcode on the side i don't know it must be something quirky about my printer you can of course take these tickets and have everybody in your party scan one of the tickets into your phone and then you'll have the ticket on your phone and you can go and they'll scan that and then they uh, then it, the machine kicks out two, uh, two little ticket passes like this, and one of them is your park ticket that you can use to get in and out of the park, so it's kind of a paper ticket thing. And the other one is the credit voucher uh, kind of purchase thing that they scan and then scan this card, which is the dining card, which loads the $25 onto the card. So they do that right at the gate when you get there. And boom, then you're going, you're ready to go once you're in the park and $25. And you can kind of use this anywhere that they're selling food. Technically, they're not supposed to be able to limit that. You're supposed to... Legally, I don't think they can limit the food, but they do. And that, you know, you're not going to have any problem spending less than $25. I mean, we actually have one extra one. Mrs. Texel still has her card that's full of the $25. And when we go on the 16th, we're going to get two more $25 cards, so then we're going to have $75 um, of food money to spend. So we're going to have to go a little food crazy when we're there next time. So that's kind of that. Now, one other thing. So when you do um, use this card, if you're an annual pass holder um, and you're in there and you have your code, because if you should have a, a discount code on your phone, that uh, lets you get into when you're in the park to buy things. 
we didn't really need, they didn't really want our annual pass. Uh, they just kind of wanted the code on the phone and, and your ID. The website says you need your pass, you need your ID, you need this code. I'm like, well, then what is the code good for? You know, because I need all this stuff, you know, it's crazy. So they really just wanted your ID because on the code is your name and then your ID to make sure that that's you. And then you get your regular, you know, 10, 20% discount, depending on the uh, pass that you had word level A, because we signature plus uh, pass holders. So that was kind of nice. So you do end up carrying a lot of cards around. So you need your annual pass, you need your uh, food cards, you need your ticket card, which you can load. This ticket card just ends up being the same number that's on the paper ticket. So you're, and then you can add that to your phone. So you're kind of duplicating these numbers around. I did use my phone to get in and out with the, tried to scan this and it said, oh, this is already in your phone. Okay. So it was already there because I had scanned it on my paper earlier. So really once you get there, you know, you can just use your phone, most everything ticket wise getting in and out and you can go in and out. So we went out and did the uh, uh, next thing, which is uh, we have our bag of swag from when we were there. So let's pull these out. Two of these things. Where's the other one? Too much stuff in here. Okay. So we did do the uh, Easter extravaganza 2021. It's cute. The little things are shaped like little eggs. And you got your stickers on the back. And then you go through the park and downtown Disney over here. Keep going, keep going. Here somewhere. Okay, there we go. And boom. Okay, so there are the eggs all over the place. You gotta pick where they are, put the sticker on there. And then you go back to uh, one of the booths and you can get some eggs. So we got the Chippendale eggs. Now, typically, we're able to get all six. Um, because we'll do, they would have, you know, the egg hunt thing in Disneyland, California Adventure, and Downtown Disney, but right now they're just doing it in uh, Downtown Disney, so, and these are $7.99 and annual pass holder discount is available for these, so you, it ends up something about, so, well, that's not too bad. Um, we have so many of these from the other egg hunts that we've done over the years, but there we go, so. That was pretty fun too. So it was really quite the day, you know. We got there. The first thing we did was we went to um, the Carthay Outdoor Al Fresco dining, and um, the one thing that we were worried about and stuff was the uh, allergy menu because uh, Texas has many many food allergies. And we got there and I thought, oh, I've seen before that they've had gluten free pasta and things like that. So. Great, we can go there, we can order gluten-free pasta. It'll be great, it'll be fine, it'll all work. We get there, they come back and tell us they don't have any gluten-free pasta in stock, so we can't. ended up having a salad and then having another big meal elsewhere, which is why we ended up with so much money left on our dining card because uh, other things that are going on, which we'll go over in a minute. But, so... Talking the, uh, I guess the head of the restaurant came out and we were talking with him momentarily and stuff. And he said, there's a supply chain problem and they can't get, they're having trouble getting truck drivers and things like that to get the product and getting the orders done and, and everything else. So that's, you know, so if you do have allergies, make sure that you have different options to go to, right? The one option that, you know, thing that your place that you're going with that food allergy may not be viable, right? Because they may not have the product. They may not have things. So you need to be very flexible if you have food allergies. Cause that's could be problematic. Uh, so since we're talking about that, um, let's switch over here. And we did. Um, we said, okay, well, we'll go to Smoke Jumpers. You know, after that, and we'll get you know, a burger. Well, okay, that's fine. So you go to your app, and you say order food, and then it gives you this, you know, do your Disney card can't be used, blah, 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 for alcohol, so fine, whatever. So 
come down to me. Smoke jumpers is not open because this is early in the morning. But so we were trying to order at it was around three o'clock. So we were trying to order from smoke jumpers. So we came in here and the arrival window, even though we were it was three o'clock, the arrival window was six thirty. So three and a half hours later. So and we refreshed and it ended up, then it came back with five 40 and then you refresh again and it goes back to 610 so if you need to order food and you're doing it on the mobile app and you kind of know when you're going to be eating as soon as you pass that gate at 12 o'clock if you're going to be eating at restaurants and doing mobile ordering i would get those done right away so because you can pick further out times you know in in the future you don't have to pick the first one right but if you're there if it's like Oh, it's four o'clock. I think we need to eat. Okay, well, let's go eat and we have to mobile order. Then you go into mobile order and it's like, it's not four o'clock. When you're eating is, you know, 720. Well, that doesn't work. So when you first get there, kind of do a little planning on your day and get your mobile orders in right away as soon as you pass that gate. As soon as 12 o'clock hits and you're in the park, go get your mobile ordering done. Cause that you know, we ended up exiting and going down to Tortilla Joe's because they let us walk in and we know we can get veggie fajitas and uh, switch some of the things around to get uh, vegetarian items inside there, right? You got to switch the pinto beans. You have to go with black beans and the rice. You have to go green rice, which is vegetarian and stuff. And then you're no cheese if you're milk. So then you can have a... a vegetarian dairy-free gluten-free kind of meal so which is what we have to go with. so that's that's an option if you have to exit and go down there and eat down there it was easy for us to walk up the friday so maybe saturday might be a little bit busier but without a reservation there was a standby line that was basically two minutes for us to wait and get in but if you're trying to order from the mobile app as soon as you get in the park and you kind of know when what times you're going to be eating outside of your meal reservations if you have them immediately go to the app get those times set up and locked in for your food right away i cannot tell you how important that is so yeah um so okay well let's go through we've got a bag here of stuff Ugh. so we did end up buying one or two things what the okay so with the eggs so we have the Chippendale eggs, they are also selling a set of small world eggs here. Small world eggs like this. So one is the hippo, one is the elephant, and then the small world front facade there. Forget how much this $14.99 plus your AP discount. So that was nice. So we did get quite a few of these. Our friends and other people in the party got these as well so they're they're very nice they're, they're, i mean there's actually stickers and stuff inside them but uh, i don't think we've ever opened them uh, we also got some little little things for some friends uh kids and stuff as to be as a gift um, so because we also got the uh the onward popcorn van um there's supposed to be lights and stuff we haven't pulled the little thing in the front but this is also kind of a gift for uh, friends who aren't able to be there. So we got that stuff going on. Uh, what else do we got in here? Uh, there are, you know, I did pick up several park maps so we can have those. I'm probably going to do an extremely high res scan of those. Um, and if you go down to the, so if you're in the park somewhere, let's go. We can go back to the map. I do. Way back here. Here is the map. So if you go over to the Paradise Gardens Park, back here in the corner is the Legacy Passhold area, and you get a uh, a magnet, a Legacy Passhold magnet, and then they'll give you touch of disney legacy pass holder button and they're basically stuck together on the tables they're stuck together like that and there's a place to get a picture and stuff back there with a legacy pass holder thing um, we also did get 
Uh, Mrs. Texel loves Groot. You get a Groot shirt. It's not often that you get it. Says N ain't nothing like me except Rocket Rack. So that was nice, and they had a actual own Rocket only shirt that was there. So that was good. Um, we did while we were checking out. Um, the lady that was checking us out at the counter all said. Um, that she's ridden the Spider-Man ride. That that is actually running in the park. That it's amazing, very interactive, and all that stuff. So was, that was really, really, really fun to hear that. Um, we did end up getting so there were two of us, so we did get a second button and pin, and we did end up getting. So they still have some of these Disneyland. Uh, the 65 things so we got one and we got two and we got three so we have a lot of these and we have two from before so now we've got five of these so dropping them on the floor here so we've got five of these and they do they're very weird the magnets are like in rows inside here because when you run them across each other you can kind of hear it going, that something clicking kind of in there. Well, that's, I just, I'm weird. I, it's a technical thing. And I'm just like, why is this doing this? So it's just kind of odd. It's that way. But anyway, so there we go. Um, what else do we have in here? Uh, this is a touch of Disney something. Oh, this is the... Smoke Jumper's allergy menu. So I'll take a picture of this and uh, post it um, as well. So if you want the special Smoke Jumper's allergy menu, you can get a free copy of that. What else do we have in this little swag bag? Uh, uh, oh, one last thing. Uh, of course, Mrs. Tech Show has a problem with Dooney and Burke bags, and they had the little Robin Hood bag there. Uh, we had them actually go back and in the backstage lot store and have them go back and they have more stock in the back. They only keep one out on the shelf on display and the rest of the stock is in there. You go back and see one that has a little bit better placement of all of the characters and stuff. So you have the king there and you have you know, Robin Hood here. Stuff like that and then rabbit and turtle and, and everything there so that was much better so yeah uh, so pretty they're very nice bags um i think this is like number 15 or 16 or 17 that she's got now but anyway so there's that um so that's the so as you get there Out so, we can... so as you get there, there's little signs as you're walking down here. Just a few more steps to the churro cart, yay! And on the back of them are "Thanks for coming" and "and come back soon." So this is how the crowd is. At some points, it seemed like there were more than you know, maybe more than the seven thousand you know supposedly that were in the park. It just seemed a little bit crowded in different areas. But on the other hand. No one's in any lines for any rides, right? There's no, you know, you don't have anybody stuck in a queue anywhere other than maybe for, for food or getting in a store, which were very short, so it didn't take much to get you know, into stores or anything. Um, the Rapids thing ride is uh, down for work and repair, so that's all kind of torn apart. Uh, and this is one of the other you know, streets just kind of seeing it. At points, it's very, very light. There's not much going on here. There's some uh, photo op things that are there with the Disney photographers, which you can get you know, all those on your on your app and everything else. They showed up like right away, like some of the magic shots and things were, you know, within five or six minutes, you know, they were showing up on the app. So that was kind of nice. Uh, the roller coaster was actually running. So if you can see the roller coaster is there. It was running. I don't know if one, that was to give you the sense that you're in a park uh, running and probably double also that they are testing the ride to 
make sure that it is running. I might as well do that during the day to give people that you know ambiance of being in a park. The uh, PAL around wheel was also running and it was stopping. They were testing, and it wasn't just running. They were actually testing the loading and stuff, even though nobody was out there. They were testing all that stuff. And they were also testing the Toy Story Mania, and they've got these, you know, flexi panels between all the rows as you go in, get in the ride. So all that is there. Um, as you can see, all these little people here, there's a lot of people sitting here eating food because all those restaurants were open there. Um, and people over here on the bridge. So it's, you know, it because nobody was in the ride queue, I think it, you know, did a little bit or making the park seem a little bit busier than it was. So um, you also couldn't go past, you know, back into the area where the Hyperion and Guardians of the Galaxy breakout was. You couldn't go back into that area. So you, I could, probably because that's the back end entrance to Marvel. And then the, from Cars land where you used to go into the, have to be a bug area, that direction. Now it goes into the Marvel area. That area was also blocked, so you couldn't go back there. So there was some area and property that is not allowing traffic to try and keep how many people there down. So we have characters around the park that were just stationed at different places way back away from where where you could get to them. Um, some of them, if you could get close enough, you know, there would be some ropes in front and you could stand there and get some tickets. You had to get in line. Um Mrs. Tech Show loves poppies, so I was taking some poppy pictures and and stuff. Um, this this is one thing that I I do sometimes. You'll take the phone and you'll stick it up underneath and take a, a picture just shooting kind of straight up, and then you get kind of those those kind of pictures like that. And I'll probably take this crop it a little bit like this. Get that little beam out of there. So that makes a you know nice little I mean that's a nice picture right there. Just with a cell phone. It's got this little whatever white thing up here. I don't know what that is. Probably just some lens flare of some kind that's there and there. Yeah, man. So um yeah. So then we've got, you know, the Marvel area here that's you know starting to really get built up. I think like it's like some of the cast members are actually riding the rides already. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know who those people are, but just taking pictures of downtown. That's an, one of the eggs back there um, in the area. And there's just all the eggs there in all the different windows. If you don't know where they are, you just got to hunt them for them. Then inside the park, there's a place where you can stand in front of this uh, big... Uh, shield and falcon wings and stuff and this was the back behind that big display of these screens that are showing the stuff so and then of course we were in back in the cars area and stuff just taking some different picture area um, and then later on of course they still are doing at sunset which sunset said was 7.13, so it was around 7.14, 7.15 that they did the uh, that they did the whole music, everything down the uh, area. So we were able to, you are able to get pretty close to the Disneyland entrance. They've taken the one rope down in the middle, and you can now, of course, what many people have posted, that you can pass there. And there's a sign, you know, be social distancing and all that garbage and stuff so people were just forming a little line and they would get up there and people would take a couple of pictures do kind of that i did get my picture with the buzz lightyear thing so there's you know makes it looks like you've got the buzz lightyear wing that was pretty cool um so there's a lot of stuff to do um when you're there even though even though the park is closed we did made it you know the whole day i mean we made it all the way we got there at noon uh, we're actually through the gate at 11:55, and then in the park got to our got to a couple of stores, got to our uh, lunch reservation, and then stayed all the way until these you know 7:15. Uh, Cars Land lighting and 
and stuff and then kind of headed out so we actually got when we got back to the car it was 750 so we made it almost the whole entire day inside the park there. and then we were busy we were you know we we're doing stuff getting the egg thing done going around to the different areas getting all the the photo op things done and stuff so it was quite quite a good day it was it was fun it was awesome to be back in the park and seeing all the cast members and everything else so um we did hear that uh, when disneyland opens we overheard little birdie speak, speaking that when disneyland opens some of the different parts of it is going to be kind of phased so uh if you're thinking of going to a specific restaurant or a specific area possibly uh when it all gets announced be aware that that may not be in phase one or phase two or phase three or phase four or however many phases they're doing. Um, so just be aware and watch for that, you know, when the announcement comes that you're gonna maybe not, what you want may not be available. So you may want to schedule your visit down a little bit further a few days later because that, or I don't know, it's gonna maybe it'll be weeks before as they roll out the different phases. Um, stuff. So we'll just see how that, how that goes, right? Um, could be quick phases, could be months, you know, I mean, with the problems with that we're hearing um, at the Carthay with supply chain, trying to get, you know, these special menu items and stuff in, that may be problematic you know, for some places to get all their different food items and, and everything in that they want to be able to present, plus getting the kitchen set up and many of the uh, staff that are in the kitchens in California Adventure right now actually worked in Disneyland. So now you have to switch and transition them over. So you have to wait until Touch of Disney is over for them to be able to be released from that, to get them moved back over, you know, reset up and everything in, in Disneyland. So things are really in flux. And I mean, maybe April 30th was, might've been a too soon of a time, you know, to open the park, but that's why I think they're moving to kind of a phase kind of thing so just be aware of that as you as we find out when the tickets are being announced which we don't have that time yet but be aware that eventually it may be phased and what you want to go to may not be open so what, what I'm sure there'll be information about it once that timeline and the schedule for tickets and, and everything else gets publicized by Disney officially so this is complete rumor none of this could be true but little birdies you know say things and uh so there you go so that was our trip to touch of disney i mean it was it was great like i said so a good full eight hour eight hour day basically open to close you know for the day so and be aware just again be aware of getting your meal reservations early even though you're not eating right now make sure those meal reservations for the day app get your mobile orders done that could be really problematic all right there you go thanks for watching if you got any questions about touch of disney any comments have you been uh let me know how how your day went whether you had problems with the uh, mobile ordering or not uh just what did you think all right thanks for watching take care <laughs>